Are you looking to get into the Xenoblade series? Are you a returning fan wanting an opinion about the game? Look no further as I'll tell you everything you need to know to make an informed decision about whether to buy the game or not. I was introduced to the Xeno series through the original Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii in 2014. Thousands of hours and multiple world records later, it has easily become my favorite series of all time. As time passed, I felt somewhat that the first game was outdated and outclassed by its successors, but now I've been given the chance to revisit the game the way it was intended to be played through Definitive Edition. In this video, I want to give you my honest thoughts on the new release, including Future Connected, and a lot of information about the game while remaining as spoiler-free as possible. So perhaps the most important aspect to me when I decide if I want to buy a game or not is the gameplay itself. Is the game fun? As Reggie would say, if a game isn't fun, why bother? Let's find out. Xenoblade is an open-world JRPG at its most basic level. You control a character and can interact with enemies in the field and start battles by engaging with them. Xenoblade's combat system has you controlling a character and engaging in battles with enemies in an open-world environment. By being near an enemy, you will automatically attack, even while moving. Each character will get up to eight normal arts and a talent art that you can see at the bottom of the screen. The normal arts all have a timed cooldown, and the talent art can be refreshed by auto-attacking or other methods for specific characters. The goal of this system is to take advantage of your arts by timing them correctly while positioning yourself smartly for bonus effects. This will give you the highest amount of damage and the most success with this system. Some characters have certain art combos that can do a lot of damage or apply strong debuffs, while others will take huge advantage of the positional abilities. Each of the characters you get access to has their own unique playstyle. You may find yourself having more fun with one of these characters than another, so you have to find your perfect match. The major gimmick of the system is the vision mechanic. At certain points throughout battle, you will see what will happen in the immediate future, and it is your goal to change the outcome to a more favorable result. You can do this with your own arts or by warning your teammates. Overall, it is a pretty fun combat system, only limited by the cooldown of your arts. I personally don't like time-based cooldowns quite as much since I always like to actively be doing things, but Xenoblade 1 usually has pretty short cooldowns that make the system really fun to experiment with. For more specifics on the combat system and more guides to really take advantage of it, be sure to subscribe to my channel because I'll be covering that a lot in the coming days. Outside of the combat, you will find a huge and beautiful open world for you to explore. There are secrets at every corner of the map and every area that make it worth taking a look around. The game will even reward you for doing this by granting you experience points simply for exploring. The areas in this game are one of my favorite aspects to be sure, so make sure you explore as much as you can. The game also has a lot of side quests that will make exploring even more worthwhile, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot. The amount of side content in this game is massive, and thanks to the upgrades to the quest tracking system, they're much less tedious than they used to be. Doing side quests grants you many rewards and can even lead to your characters getting extra skill trees or abilities. It's absolutely worth your time to do them. For the side quests themselves, any objectives for the quest will be highlighted in red exclamation marks on the map screen. If you focus on a specific quest, that objective will be highlighted in blue. It makes it much easier to complete many of the quests and you'll find yourself spending much less time looking things up or wandering around aimlessly. That said, the amount of side quests can be overwhelming also, and many of them aren't always the most exciting thing ever. They aren't as amazing as the side quests in Xenoblade X or Torna, but many still tell interesting stories and expand the lore of the world even more. In Future Connected specifically, you have the Pond Spectres, which are side quests that will increase your battle capabilities by completing by helping out some Napons along the way. These are very much worth doing, trust me. Content-wise, you can easily get over 100 hours out of this game. It would likely take you over 50 just to beat the main story alone. It's a very long game with much to do. Future Connected, on the other hand, only took me 7 hours to beat, and I did a pretty fair amount of side content. Don't go in expecting it to be as fleshed out as Torna was for Xenoblade 2. So let's talk about the story. The reason most people love this game is because of how good the story is and how they got attached to the cast of the game. It's impossible to talk about it in much detail without getting into spoilers, but it really is a fantastic and straightforward story. This world is locked in an internal war between the Bionis and the Mechonis, essentially man and machine. The machines, or Mechon, continue to attack humanity and are virtually unbeatable by most normal means. 
Our hero Shulk is the only one, or functionally the only one, who can use the legendary sword known as the Monado, a mystical sword with the ability to combat the Mechon. By using the Monado, Shulk gains the ability to see into the future, which becomes a very important aspect of the plot and the combat system of the game, as I explained earlier. In the first hour, this game hooks you by having the Mechon attack Shulk's hometown and doing a lot of damage to set up the plot of the rest of the game, as Shulk and his best friend Ryan to leave to get revenge and destroy the Mechon forces once and for all. From there, the game takes many twists and turns, and you meet many new friends along the way to aid you in your quest. Shulk is an absolutely fantastic character with amazing voice acting, and he really carries the game, and he makes you want to keep playing solely to advance the plot and see what happens. If you are interested in RPGs with a good story, Xenoblade is absolutely at the top of the class and well worth your buy. It is worth noting this game is very much story driven. I feel it doesn't have as big of a focus on character interaction and development outside of Shulk, especially compared to something like Xenoblade 2 or Xenosaga, so if you want to learn more about the characters, be sure to do the heart to heart scattered across the land which will flesh out the side characters a little bit more. Let's talk about presentation. The new art style, while more anime than it used to be, is much more fitting for the game overall. It really lets the characters have much more emotion and brings the story to life. The remastered OST is also incredible, of course. Every area has some amazing music and all the battle themes have been revamped to sound better than ever. The new themes in Future Connected are amazing also, and just to add to how great the original OST is. There's been a massive amount of quality of life features added from the original game like the map being greatly improved, even giving you an exact path to the next story destination along with many icons to make finding things much easier. All the menus are much easier to navigate with great visual clarity and overall it makes the experience much better. Now let's talk about Future Connected, specifically for those of you who want some more information about that. As you know, it's a story expansion taking place a year after the main story. I won't lie to you, you should not go into this expecting anything jaw-dropping or revolutionary. The length of the game is about 7 hours as I said earlier and you could probably get that up to 11 or 12 if you did absolutely all of the side content. It takes place on the shoulder of the Bionis, which is a huge area of course, and focuses much on fleshing out Melia and her relationship with her people. Shulk kinda takes a back seat here. On the upside you get a heart-to-heart -heart equivalent that is actually fully voiced this time around, so that's very nice. Your new characters, Nene and Kino, are functionally identical to Ryan and Charla from the main game, and they get some small development and motivations of their own for helping you out. One thing that was disappointing to me is that I felt like I left Future Connected with just as many questions as I had going in. It felt like a major plot point was just dropped as I got to the final boss save earlier than I expected to. It was underwhelming for sure, but it's a nice wrap-up to Melia's character arc, so if you are a fan of her, then you will enjoy the experience. That said, Overall, Xenoblade Definitive Edition is still an amazing game and absolutely worth your money if you're a fan of the series or looking to get into the series. If you enjoyed the original, you will love all the quality of life changes that will make the experience even better, and if you like RPGs, this one should absolutely be on your list to experience. Give this game a chance, and you will not be disappointed.